Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the Scaling Rails screencast series supported by New Relic. With New Relic RPM, you can see missing database indexes, poorly performing SQL queries, and trace every slow transaction in your production Rails app. So if you haven't checked out RPM yet, now's the time. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at fragment caching. So let's call up our Apache and Mongrel again and see what this looks like. So here comes our client request. It's going to go through the Apache to the Mongrel. And this particular page we're loading has several different pieces we want to cache independently. Maybe it has a header, a couple boxes, and a dashboard. So as we render the page, we save those items separately in their each little cache. The request goes back out to the client. And now the second time when a request comes in again, this time we pull these different pieces out of the cache, combine them into a single page, and send that back out to the client. So I thought we'd take a look at a website where we might decide to implement fragment caching. So here's an upcoming.org page. And as we can see here, we've got uh, our name up at the top, local event guide for Orlando, um, the most popular events. Up here we've got my events. And down over here we have um, the most recent event photos in Orlando. So as you can see here, this page is really boxy. It's got certain elements that we might want to cache separately in their own fragment cache. So what might fragment caching look like in the application we've been building? Let's take a look. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to stop uh, action caching the index, because that's where we want to put our fragment cache. We're going to go down to the index action, and we're going to add a recent post method, where we pull the three most recent posts that have been added to the database. Cool. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, look at the partial that I've already created. So this partial that I created beforehand is basically going to print out the recent posts in a little box for us. So I've already got that. And now in our index action, we just need to include that partial. Cool. Now we should be able to just save our stuff, go over to the browser and there it is. There's our recent post box right up there. And it shows us the three most recent posts. Pretty cool. Now we're going to implement fragment caching. <laughs> okay. All we need to do to fragment cache this little bit <clears throat> is simply write cache recent posts. So that's our cache key up there. It's recent posts. And then close that in a block. Now if we go back to our web page, refresh. Now we're fragment caching. We can check down in the log and we can see here that it says cache fragment hit views recent posts. So now we're fragment caching. However, if you take a look at this, um, you'll notice there's something curious about it. That the SQL statement for getting all the most recent posts is still being run, even though we're not using it anymore in the view because we fragment cached it. So we need to figure out a way to stop that SQL from running in our controller. So what we can do is we can say, if the fragment doesn't exist, then run the SQL statement. Otherwise, just skip it, like so. So if we save this, and we go back to our browser, do a refresh or two, we can then check back in our log, and it's going to show us that, OK, well, this time it got loaded from the cache. And it actually checked to see if it existed at that one point. It exists, so it didn't run the SQL statement. And, uh, and then we're good. Now one more thing here, um, if I edit the post here, one of the most recent posts, and I add cha 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 cha, hey look, it didn't update on the fragment cache. So again, we've got to figure out a way of dealing with cache expiration when something gets updated. One way to do this would be to go into our sweeper, and here, instead of the expire action for the index, which we're not using anymore, um, we're going to say expire fragment and give it the cache key for that fragment. Now when we go ahead and edit that, update it again, go back to the index, we can see that uh, it was properly expired and recached, and we're golden. We basically have five methods to interact with our view cache. So first of all, we've got that cache do block, which we just see in our views. And then at our controller layer, we've got four other methods we might want to have access to. Write fragment, read fragment, fragment exist, and expire fragment. So let's take a look back at the upcoming.org web page and figure out how we might use some of these methods. 
So as you can see down here in the bottom right of the page, we've got the most recent event photos from Orlando. Well, what might that look like if we fragment cache it? It might look something like this, where we actually use the city name inside the fragment cache name. So we can have a different one for every city. If we then needed to expire it, well, it'd probably be a line looking something like this. We might even consider fragment caching the My Events box here, because this might be something that we show across multiple pages. Um, the syntax might look something like this, where we have the user ID inside of the cache key. So now you know how to fragment cache, but let's make sure it's perfectly clear when you want to do it. So you want to fragment cache when you can't use page or action caching, probably because certain parts of the page are unique to each user. So how do you figure out what to fragment cache? Well, you take a look at a page. You know, if it's got boxes like this, you might recognize that, oh, hey, this, this top one and this side one are the same between all the users. And maybe I also reuse them across multiple pages of my website. So those are the ones I'm going to fragment cache. And now it's time for another rant. This one being that cache expiration really sucks. To figure out what I mean by this, if you take a look at a web page like upcoming.org, if we really took the time to fragment cache the crap out of this web page, and then something happened where we say deleted an event, well, all this page is is like listing events. That means we'd have to clear the caches in like a million different places. I mean, look at it. We'd have to clear all of these. We'd have to clear all of these. We'd have to clear all of these. If there's any personal pages we're fragment caching, clear all of those, and so on and so forth. It's pretty crazy. So there would be so many places we have to expire that it's just it's just a big headache. Cache expiration just sucks. There's this quote here that says, you know, cache expiration is one of the hardest things to do in computer science. Because it really is when you get these big complicated web pages. Luckily, memcached saves the day. Memcached has two mechanisms that will allow us to avoid doing any expiration whatsoever. But you're going to have to wait to the next episode to find out more about it. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. <laughs>